I'm Emily, and I make videos about what life is like in different countries around the world. I'm here in Tunisia during the month of Ramadan, and over the next five days, I'm going to be showing you what it's like here during this special time. I'll be going to iftar dinners at friends' houses, showing you the nightlife here, and explaining the ways in which society fundamentally functions differently during this 30-day period. Oh yeah, and I'll be fasting. So right now, I'm just walking through my neighborhood. And I'm gonna show you guys which things are open and which things aren't open during the day. So convenience stores like this one are open during the day. So you can get things like water, snacks, essentials like toilet paper. However, cafes like this one that you'll see to my left are all closed in second during the day because who's gonna go and drink a coffee? Nobody's eating or drinking anything. But they do open up at night and they stay open a little bit later than they would normally. Even so, it's still so weird to me to see like cafes closed during the day. In my country, that's just unthinkable. You know, in the US, can you imagine cafes being closed during the day? But you get used to it. Another important thing that stays open during Ramadan are the grocery stores. So Monoprix, Magasin General, they're both open all day during Ramadan. Um, they just have reduced hours. So don't try to go right before Iftar because it, it'll be closed. All the workers will have gone home to go have uh, dinner with their families and break their fast. Um, but otherwise, you know, I think they're open from pretty early in the morning until until uh, just before Iftar. And then I'm not sure if they're open after Iftar. I believe they are for a few more hours. Pharmacies are of course open. And I think a lot of other stores are open too, like just regular establishments. But um, I believe most people get off work early during Ramadan. So for example, my friend's mom always gets off at three. And essentially the way that she justified that, or the company justified that, was that they cut out the lunch break. They cut out the two hour lunch break, guys. They have two hour lunch breaks here. They started at the normal time that they would during non-Ramadan times of the year, so like 8 a.m. or whatever and they just get out early they get out at three so it's not like they're working fewer hours they're just not working as late oh what is this i think i found a restaurant that might be open during uh ramadan uh, okay You'll typically find places with restaurants that are open and in places that have higher concentrations of foreigners living in the area. So this is one of those areas, Menza 1. There's, I think, somewhat of a significant population. Not as many people here as there are in La Marsa that are foreigners. But, um, but there are some of us. So this cafe, Gourmandise, you can see the tables and chairs outside that would normally be set up for people to sit down are all put up, but it looks like they are kind of open on the inside. So I'm thinking about going in and asking them. <laughs> okay, just uh, <laughs> Oh man, I just got home from the walk and I want to eat so badly. Oh, I'm so hungry. The last meal I had was actually suhoor, which is like the pre-sunrise breakfast that people wake up in the middle of the night to eat. I had uh, what they call draw, 
which is like a sorghum porridge that you can cook at home. I went to the store to pick up my own sorghum and it's a grayish, tannish looking powder. And when it comes to making it, you add it to a large amount of milk in a pot and you heat it up, continuously stirring it the entire time until it fully dissolves into the milk and the mixture thickens. And then you pour it into a bowl and you can add nuts or dried fruit. Tunisians um, like to eat it for sahur because it's packed full of energy and um, it's really hearty, so it's supposed to get you through the day, or at least a good part of it. And I feel like my draw is just starting to wear off. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, I'm feeling hungry. I was told that one of the most important things to do during Ramadan to keep your mind off food and water is to keep yourself busy. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of work now, do a little bit of editing. Um, maybe I'll take care of the dishes that I've got accumulating over there. Um, yeah. And just kind of bide my time until my friend comes over to pick me up to go have iftar dinner at his house. Which is in about, uh... Well, dinner's gonna be in about three hours, but he'll pick me up pretty soon here, so... Um, yeah, I just have to make it through. I can tell I'm low energy, I'm dropping things. Okay, so my friend Razi just picked me up. Hey. We're gonna head to his house and uh, have some iftar. Okay. That was your best day. Honestly, not as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, I was expecting headaches because of the no coffee thing. Or dehydration. Or dehydration, but... Uh, I got used to it. Already? Yeah. So you don't feel hungry at all? No. Not at all? I don't know. Jimmy. Do you feel thirsty? Yeah, thirsty. So the thirst isn't something that goes away? No. You can always feel it. So your dad's grabbing some lemons off your lemon tree for uh, iftar? To pour in the soup or on the brika if we have brika, but I don't know where we're gonna have any. Barsha, Barsha Karis. Okay, is this enough lemons for dinner or what? Like, for the do we need day, more? Okay. So I made it here to Ghazi's house. He lives about 30 minutes away from where I live in the city center of Tunis. So this is kind of like countryside a little bit. He's got a couple puppies. This is Clyde. Hi Clyde. Hi Clyde. And Bonnie, who recently gave birth to a bunch of puppies, so she uh, she's locked in there with her puppies. So some of Razi's friends are going to take a quick trip up to the mountain nearby to uh, hang out before iftar dinner, so we're going to go join them, see what people do to pass the time before dinner. Salam, salam. Shnoa huelkom. The best, ena the best. The best. Mrigla. Tava. Tunsaya, mare. Le, le, le. Tunsaya, tava. Hab, hab, tarif haja. Kolhom. <laughs> just hungry, Jana. Jana Barka. Mush, not thirsty, not uh, no headaches from coffee. 
You're not supposed to eat something salty for spoor. It's supposed to be uh, sweet, I think, right? Yes, yes. If you eat something salty, it's going to make you thirstier throughout yes. the day. So that's it. That's the advice. So are we just waiting for Khalil then? Yes. Uh, like always. Kimalada. <laughs> Kimalada. Khalil, Makhar Kimalada. Alright, let's go. Do you guys go here a lot? Yeah. To the mountain? How long does it usually take to get there? From where you live? Mountain? Yeah. 30 minutes. Somewhere around that. So we're going an hour before Iftar? Yeah. And it's 30 minutes each way? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a cement factory. It's a cement factory? We decided to just turn back because it's just getting too late, right? Yeah. All right, so we just made it back to the house. Six minutes before the iftar prayer time, we've got the TV set up here with the Quran playing. This is Tunisian national TV. So essentially, once they get to the part of the prayer where they say Allahu Akbar. That's when we can all start eating. Ooh. This looks so good. So these are stuffed artichokes? Yeah. Wow. And I think these stuffed are Stuffed artichoke hearts. Ah, and some of them are potatoes. These are potatoes and the others are artichokes. Wow. What's this? No, I have a... Ah, slata. Purple slata. I don't think I've ever seen this one. Hiya, Ghazi. Fisa, Fisa. I'm trying my best. Hot the towel. I'm trying. So, this is the slata. Slata snow? Blanket. Blanket. Look, yeah. it's a little, but it's uh, rich. Mm. You have everything on it. It's got slata meshwaya, harissa, baguette, adham, zitun, kabab, capers, yes. and uh, tuna. Soup. 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 So this isn't going to be like a super traditional Tunisian iftar dinner. It's just going to be kind of like a dinner, you know, with salad, soup, a main dish, lots of food. It's definitely going to be filling, but it's not, it doesn't have like the, I would say the traditional Tunisian like iftar dinner essentials, if that makes any sense. Like for example, the soup uh, traditionally would be a different one called shorba. But we're having legume soup. But honestly, I can't imagine eating the same like four dishes every single night for 30 days every Ramadan. I'm, I feel like it's more practical that uh, families just make whatever, you know? They mix it up and uh, keep it fresh. I think that's more, more like what uh, real people who live here are doing. Okay, so I've got my plate uh, and my soup, and I could start eating. Right? Yeah. 
Don't give chips. That's okay. Mm. Soup is really good. Bneen. Saha, saha. And then this is um, brick, but not uh, fried brick. It's baked. Huh? I'm going to control her mayonnaise. Mm. It has meat inside. Yes. Super good. Benin. Benin. <laughs> and this uh, salad baguette. Blanket. <laughs> blanket. <laughs> Slat the blanket. Slat the blanket. Which looks super delicious. These are just appetizers, by the way. Hmm. Oh. I have to go eat too. All right, so I've got two with artichoke hearts and uh, one with potato stuffed with um, a combination of meat and other things. And apparently this dish is called um, fonduk. Yeah. Which means a uh, fruit hotel. We don't know how it got this name, but isn't it obvious? Hotel. Mm. Bina. Bina. Fruity. Is it? <laughs> and then, of course, after the dinner, you have to have your coffee that you haven't drank all day and uh, something sweet. So here we have two kakwarka and a makruth. So the kakwarka means Paper cake. Warka is paper, kak is cake. And it's called kakwarka because there's so many different layers of pastry here and uh, it's filled with some kind of almond type uh, paste. This is my favorite Tunisian dessert. Mm. So good, soft, sweet, delicious. And the makruz. So this isn't like your typical makruth. This is makruth baklewa. And um, it's like uh, some kind of semolina dough on the outside filled with nuts on the inside, as you can see. Hence the baklewa in the name. Super good. Delicious. Saha. Take a and the coffee. This is nice. After a whole day of no coffee, this is nice. After iftar dinner, many families gather around the TV to watch the drama shows that are especially released for Ramadan. And of course, along with the Ramadan TV shows come the Ramadan commercials. Yeah, so I can drive in Tunisia. Believe it or not, I can drive stick shift and I can drive in Tunisia. Two achievements, things to be proud of. Barsha obstacles on the road. Two? To the right. I to tell you that. All right, we're here. We made it to the cafe, so let's go kick some butt in Shkoba. Alright, so we're playing, me and Ghazi are going to play against uh, Khalil and Ryan And uh, I think it's going to be easy <laughs> Alright, so we lost the first game And uh, we're winning the second game So we're probably going to play, uh, what is it called? Ajin. We're probably going to do an Ajin, Which is the third game that decides the best two out of three and uh, while we were playing, actually, one of the, 
the manager of the cafe recognized me, I guess, and so he brought a free kunef. <laughs> but I don't know what this is, though. I have no idea what this is. There is blossom, uh, orange blossom water. How does it work? You do like you pour it. Oh, you go like this. Yeah. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> Is that your yeah. <laughs> So I've never had kunefa outside of like the Levant area. So uh, we'll have to see if it's good. Good, not bad. Good. Give it back. All right. Back to playing. Ooh. Saha, Saha. Ooh, nice. Should be one more round. Then. We are the <laughs> Good game, good game. 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 Good